Hello and welcome to a special episode of my podcast. My name is Cheryl and this is Cappuccino Crafts where I like to talk about knitting and sometimes crochet and other chatty things. Um, today I have a specific topic I want to just focus on today. I'm not going to show you any of my projects that I'm working on or any of the normal things from a regular episode. Today what I want to do is um, go through a, a kind of a walkthrough of my physical hard copy book knitting library. Now I also have a lot of digital individual patterns and some digital ebooks and things like that. We're not going to talk about any um, digital library at all today. <laughs> only, um, only the actual physical books that you hold in your hand and keep on a shelf. My physical library is actually pretty small, although I'm not going to show you 100% of it. Um, I still have a little more than the things that I'm going to show you, but um, I don't have a, a very large um, collection. I used to have more, but it's a long and complicated story. Um, but I don't, I don't have those, that portion, um, about half or two thirds of what I used to have is what I have now. Um, but you know what? I find that it's perfectly fine. I didn't need as many books as I had, that's for sure. Um, and I, I like having this small little library and the heart of it is really special. Um, I'm thankful for the books that um, I do still have and they are the most important ones um, that I really couldn't do without. Well, that's not totally true. I could do without, but I really wouldn't want to. <laughs> um, so let's start with, I think the the biggest and most comprehensive, which is Vogue Knitting, the ultimate knitting book. And this is the new edition, fully edited and revised. Um, it's got a lot of different format and it's got some new sections, which I really love, but I actually, have a much older version of Vogue Knitting that I got, I think, in 1993 or so. I think this was uh, printed in the late 80s, this particular edition. Um, and I got it because I had some pattern books and a couple of basic like learn to knit books from when I was much younger, but I didn't have a comprehensive uh, reference and I knew that there were a lot of things I didn't know about yet and a lot of things I hadn't tried and had never done before, but I was moving and actually for um, some years I lived overseas. And I wasn't going to be in an English speaking <laughs> environment and any other knitters that I met there probably would not uh, be able to speak English with me or I couldn't take any classes. I couldn't um, go to a yarn store and ask questions. Um, so I knew I needed something to make uh, to answer my questions that I didn't know and that I needed help with and was all in English. So I got this and I took it with me and I, ha I think I had this and one of my basic books that I packed up and um, took with me and 
it got me through, although I wasn't as constant a knitter back then. Um, and I, I wasn't knitting a whole lot. But I, this would have gotten me through, I think, no matter how much knitting or no matter what project I wanted to do. Um, because this is really a, a pretty comprehensive guide. And it's got a it's got stitch a stitch dictionary section. Now it's not the same in the new edition. The, some stitches are kind of spread out in different areas depending on um, what whether it's color work or lace. Um, like I said, the format is different there. Um, but this older one does actually have a stitch dictionary in the back, which was the biggest thing that I used actually more than any other part. another page but it's also got um, basic it's got cast ons bind offs all many different kinds it's got information about different kinds of yarn and different kinds of fibers it's really got a little bit of everything it's got um, a whole pretty big section in, uh, on designing your designing your own sweater um, well it's got mod anyway it's got templates and how to make your own pattern for a sweater and about different kinds of arm holes and raglan shaping and um, set in sleeve shaping neckline shaping Dart shaping, circular yokes, it's got um, it's really got it's got a section on color knitting that's got kind of a little bit of everything. This is even better. I love this new edition, the new sections that they added. And um, some of the new photos, although they do have a lot of the old diagrams, they carried over to this. And I like the diagrams, but they do have some new photos. And um, they've added new sections that weren't at all in the f older edition, like shawls, which is exciting, and socks. <laughs> yeah. I'm, you know I'm happy about that, although, anyway, and still lots of things for um, making your own patterns and um, putting together, you know, your own, your own garment the way that you want it. Um, accessories I there were and there were I, there were at the end of this there's a couple of accessory patterns at the end of this older edition there are some patterns for some different things that are from the magazine uh, patterns that have been published already and the very last section is some of their Vogue patterns of different kinds of things, sweaters, scarves, uh, a Fair Isle vest, um, and then it's, but, uh, and um, lots of information about finishing your projects in both of the editions. Um, so really, this is 
kind of an all-in-one um, really makes an excellent reference to answer most of the questions you would have at whatever level of uh, experience you are and when I got the new book for Christmas a couple of years ago I thought about do I want to keep my old edition or do I maybe want to donate it or um, give it to a friend or something um, I thought about do I want to keep it do I need both and in the end I thought some of the format and some of the um there were enough differences and i liked how actually the stitch patterns were collected in a stitch dictionary section that was its own section in the old edition where in the new one they're spread out whatever pattern stitch patterns they do uh give you are spread out in different areas of different um, different styles of knitting. So I thought, you know, there are reasons I want to have the old one as well as the new one. So I am happy to have both. Um, and if any of you do have the old edition and you've wondered whether the new one is worth it, um, I think it depends if you love shawl knitting and socks and some of some of those things that they've added you really might like to have the new edition um, if you don't think some of those new uh, features are um, that important to you then you might not need it Another book that I have that I'm really happy to have is a book on sweater knitting. It has patterns, but it also has very detailed um, notes and instructions and suggestions for how to custom fit your sweater to you, especially for different body types. This is Little Red in the City by Isolde Teague. Now I used to have, I started out with different sweater reference books. I bought this after that incident <laughs> happened and I was missing every sweater book that I had. Um, I used to have the Am Bud um, top down uh, sweater handbook which is excellent. I used to have the um, Jacqueline Fee uh, Sweater Workshop, which is a, also a top-down seamless uh, workbook. Um, and those were the main ones that helped me get started actually making my first sweater. Um, those were the books that got me through my very first sweater, but I didn't have them anymore. But I really wanted an, an another sweater reference book, and I, I liked that this book had the added bonus of really detailed fitting notes and instructions for body shaping for a lot of different body types, from very large to... Um, very small and you know we're not always the same size at the top that we are in our hips or midsection so sometimes the proportions are a little different we're all there's no one standard body <laughs> we don't come in standard shape so uh, this really appealed to me and it's one that I had thought about buying when I was researching and thinking about my first sweater books but this came out after I'd already bought one of them and and you know I I did think of 
when I when I was buying the Anne Bud book, I was trying to decide between this and the Anne Bud. At that time, I chose the Anne Bud, but this time I'm like, I'm gonna make a different choice. I'm gonna get that Isolde Teague, and I have not knit a sweater pattern out of this yet, but I really want to do this one and a couple. A couple of others and I'm also really happy to have the fitting and the shaping information um, to help me if I get and <laughs> start having a problem or to help me um, adjust a pattern if a pattern doesn't come in my size which happens too much but um, help me be able to deal with that if I'm desperate to knit that particular thing. Um, that book will get me through that. Thankfully, though, right now there is a push and a lot of designers are working hard to offer a wider range of sizes because it's become very clear and people are saying we're not going to put up with it anymore that um, the selection of sizes in most patterns is really not enough and so many people are left out so that's wonderful and a great thing about this moment <laughs> in our um, in our knitting lives but and that is a very very important book in my physical library this is one I've had for quite a long time and it is just a little stitch dictionary that I got at uh, either Michael's or Joanne's. I can't remember which. It was a long time ago. Um, it's by Leisure Arts. And Leisure Arts is a publisher that does a lot of the books and pamphlets and things that you'll find in the big box stores. And they do a good job. This is 50 stitches. And I've used this many times. I have used this a lot. Um for doing, I uh, did uh, an afghan with one of the leaf stitches, I think the traveling leaves. I've used it to find lace, there's got some lace stitches in here, I've used it to get some lace stitches to put onto a sweater or a hat or socks. Um, but I, I love to have a stitch dictionary for reference. Yeah, here's the traveling leaves that I used to make an afghan a long time ago. I had so much fun knitting that. Um, Yeah, I love to just be able to look through different um, stitch patterns and see, ooh, what can I do with that? Where, what would look nice with that? Um, it's just fun. It can get your imagination going. Um, another book that I'm so excited did not disappear <laughs> is this Shetland Lace Knitting Book. The Magic of Shetland Lace Knitting by Elizabeth Lovick. And it's a stitch dictionary mostly with a lot of Shetland Lace stitches. And then um, in the front, it talks about designing in Shetland Lace. And these are for some um, round shawls. This is a pie shawl, um, but circular shawls. 
different ways to do that and also other shapes for different kinds of shawls square like a hat triangle so it gives you a lot of instructions for traditional shapes and ways to put the stitch patterns together to create um, a finished item here yep putting motifs together and then in the back they do have a few fully designed patterns with charts and instructions to show you um, just how a whole project comes together and the techniques and everything. Oh, aren't those cute? So I think this is a wonderful format for a book. It um, gives you gives you ideas for um, how to design your own lace shawls or lace projects with those traditional Shetland patterns. And I I have used uh, some of those lace patterns in projects. I haven't done I haven't used their shapes or instructions to put things together to make my own shawl, but I have used some of the lace motifs. I put one in a sweater because I didn't like the original lace that was in the original pattern, and I wanted a different lace, so I found one in there, and I switched it out. Um, I used that chart instead of the chart from the pattern and this is the last book I want to show you this very special book one of my favorites is this thing of paper by Carrie Westerman 11 knitting patterns inspired by books and it also includes with the patterns essays um, describing her inspiration and also describing just um, her thoughts about the history of <clears throat> printed books and also creating and crafting. I'm going to read to you from the back of the book because she explains it better than I can. How long will print this thing of paper last? Inspired by her lifelong love of books and manuscripts, the designer and writer Carrie Westerman takes you on a journey from medieval monasteries to contemporary libraries, exploring the connections between books and knitting, tracing the development of the written word from 14th century manuscripts to the earliest printed books. This thing of paper is a stunning collection of 11 knitting patterns accompanied by thought-provoking and personal essays. And uh, the patterns in here are so beautiful. Let me show you a hat and a fingerless glove set. A beautiful cabled cardigan. Here's the front. And look at this shawl. Each of these patterns is very special. And this is, I'm so excited about this book, um, and I can't wait to knit from it. And 
Yeah, because I love books and I love history and I love all the inspirations and everything that this book is about. And it's wonderful to read, it's beautiful to look at, and yeah, I that's all the words I have. <laughs> that's all the words I have for this book. Um, but I hope that you have enjoyed um, looking at these books and um, exploring really the core, the very heart of my physical knitting library. And if you have special favorite books, um, maybe the first book that you uh, knit from, that uh, how-to book um, that taught you how to knit, or um, the first uh, book with the first patterns that you ever used, or a, maybe a book that was handed down in your family. Um, if you have any special or favorite or most useful books in your knitting library, please let's talk about them in the comments down below um, and share our favorite knitting books. Take care and see you next time. Bye-bye.